but first tonight. Disgraceful behaviour by media personalities responding to Warren Mundine's devastating revelation that he tried to take his own life after being abused over his opposition to The Voice. In a very personal interview, Mundine reveals in Matt Cunningham's Sky News documentary tonight that he's been harassed and racially targeted so severely that it's impacted on his mental health. There's been very divisive in the Aboriginal community. Uh, the arguments that have arisen, it's been very uh, divisive in the mainstream Australia. Uh, and uh, I can't see that uh, getting any better. Mate, it's, uh, I've been called everything under the sun and 90% of them I don't even know, I had to look it up in the dictionary. You laugh it off, but it must have some effect. Uh, well, it did. I, try, I tried to commit suicide twice. So it does have an effect on you. It's so sad to hear, and Warren Mundine makes an outstanding contribution to public life. He has for decades, and he's entitled to his views on The Voice. He's far from the only Indigenous Australian to oppose the voice to Parliament. He argues it will racially divide our country. Mundine is thankfully now receiving professional help. It's a very intimate revelation that Mundine makes this evening on Sky News. But the response from one media personality, Paul, bon Paul Bongiorno, is quite disgraceful. Sky News reports that Bongiorno tweeted this is transparent, blatant politics, hardly worth a second of sympathy. Only the gullible and opportunistic racists will fall for it. It's just, it's beyond. Bongiorno is a left-wing journalist. He writes for the Saturday paper, The New Daily, and contributes to ABC Radio National. The ABC declined to comment. They said Bongiorno wasn't an employee. But this is an astonishing lack of empathy. How can anyone think or even decide to tweet that a person's heartfelt disclosure about a serious mental health battle could be part of a political campaign to win a referendum? It's nonsensical, it's cruel. And it's not only one side of politics or one side of the voice debate that's finding this referendum incredibly bruising. Tonight in his documentary, Matt Cunningham reports that racial abuse is escalating and it's happening on both sides. And he cites an analysis by Queensland University of Technology. The voice referendum is, or at least it should be, about a battle of ideas, a discussion about the best way to improve Indigenous disadvantage and whether constitutional changes will or won't achieve this. The need for more respect in this debate is obvious. And on that point, former Labor politician Gary Johns's comments repeated again on Andrew Bolt's show last night that he thinks anyone claiming to be Indigenous should have a blood or DNA test before accessing welfare. They are beyond the pale. If you want to have a race-based system whereby you get benefits because of your ancestry, then at some stage you have to measure I mean, if there are fakes or frauds, they'll be exposed and caught out as they always have been. But to think, to even argue that every Indigenous person should be blood tested is despicable. It's reminiscent of what other ethnicities have faced. It's one step away from slapping one group of people with a yellow star. It's a terrible idea and Gary Johns should drop it. Matt Keane and Andrew Charlton have reportedly called for Johns to resign from the No campaign. Meanwhile, leading Yes campaigner Noel Pearson says the hatred directed at Warren Mundine is heartbreaking. He said that Warren and him have been roughly on the same page when it comes to Indigenous policy for 20 years. But on this, on The Voice, they disagree. Pearson worries for Australia if the referendum isn't successful and it's increasingly looking like it won't be. Yeah, no, I think it's reasonable to ask, we've got to interrogate this. We have to interrogate the voice. Um, but we also got to listen to the solutions. And what if you lose? Well, then, I, I think this, I can only see despair. I, I cannot see uh, any good flowing from a no vote. 
Now, this all comes as Anthony Albanese has hit back today at claims that he misled Australians when he said The Voice had nothing to do with treaty. Albanese, as you know, has on several occasions said The Voice would be the first step towards treaty. He discussed the idea when he was in opposition, announcing that Labor would deliver on a national process for treaty. A clarion call for truth, treaty and voice, delayed and then dismissed. A generous statement to advance reconciliation that a Labor government will embrace and we will advocate at a referendum. And there can be no reconciliation without treaty. Those comments from the Prime Minister in August 2021 when he was in opposition. But just two months ago in May, Albanese again indicated that the voice would lead to treaty and truth-telling. They are uh, very much a part of uh, the, the next phase, if you like, and one of the things that a voice to parliament will be able to do is to uh, talk about uh, Makarata, the need for agreement making and coming together after uh, a, a conflict. And on the night he won the federal election just over a year ago, he said he'd implement the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full, and this includes treaty. On behalf of the Australian Labor Party, I commit to the Uluru Statement from the Heart. But when Albanese went on radio with Ben Fordham last week, he said the voice had nothing to do with treaty. As part of the Uluru Statement, we have a voice, we have treaty, we have truth-telling. As part of a treaty, won't there be compensation? If there is, I mean, that's not totally unexpected. This isn't about a treaty, Ben. But there are three parts of the Uluru is, Statement. Yeah, and this is, not, so you're talking this about is the voice. not about a treaty. But as part of treaty, which we this guess is, will be a following step... This is not about a treaty. Do you foresee that compensation would be This paid? is not about a treaty. And then over the past couple of days, this video resurfaced of Albanese wearing a Voice Treaty Truth T-shirt. Well, the Prime Minister laughed it off today in a soft radio inter interview. He said, I did see that and had a laugh, frankly. It just shows the desperation of people having a legitimate, sensible campaign against what is such a modest proposal. But Tony Abbott says... It's much more than a T-shirt with a slogan. He claims Albanese is misleading Australians over whether treaty will follow the voice. And Tony Abbott had this to say on Ben Fordham's program yesterday. And uh, I suppose uh, this is the problem. When you turn yourself into a billboard, <laughs> you uh, suddenly get uh, fingered for things. And, and uh, quite apart from anything the Prime Minister chose to wear at a concert... Um, I go back to that initial statement that he made as Prime Minister. The new government is committed to the Uluru statement from the heart in full. In other words, uh, voice, treaty, truth, in full. That's why uh, it was, as I said, uh, uh, a moment of amnesia for the Prime Minister to, den to deny here in this chair last week uh, that the voice had anything to do with treaty. It has everything to do with treaty. The whole point of having a voice, uh, if the activists are to be believed, is to start the treaty-making process, and government ministers have said as much. The Prime Minister's political standing and this referendum are inseparable. Albanese used his election night speech, as you saw, to advocate for the voice and to say he'd implement the Uluru Statement from the heart in full. But support for The Voice is now crashing, according to the polls. And it's because of two main reasons. Firstly, the government didn't work out details about how people would be appointed to the advisory body before it announced the referendum. And even now, Linda Burney says that questions about who and how The Voice members will be chosen will all be nutted out later on after the votes have been cast. The second reason support is crashing is because of the model that Albanese chose. Many Australians, as the polls show, are worried about the power the voice could have to legally challenge laws set by Parliament. So when Albanese fights, and as he is tonight, for the Yes campaign, 
he's also fighting for his own political fortune. If this referendum fails, he personally has a lot to lose too. Uh, it's not binding. It's not going to be a funding body. It will give advice in order to close the gap on health, on education, on housing, on in incarceration rates, on all the areas uh, where there's this chasm between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australia. That idea that there's an entrenched political right for a small group of people means that there's an entrenched political right to have an additional say on everything, not just on matters that relate to Indigenous people. There are very many ways to skin this cat and this is a really, really radical and experimental way to do it.